Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Profchoff, and welcome back to another episode of a uh, clueless Bulgarian boy watches and learns more about his country's neighboring countries. And we're back with Greece geography now. Greece, let's see it. Let's see it. I don't know much about Greece besides like the old old Greece, um, you know, stories and shit. Because that was those were interesting to me. Uh, the old wars like Athens and shit like that, those are cool. Greek city states and stuff you're like that. You're the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Ooh, 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 you're the one that I want. You Let's get my it. reference, right? You get it. I'm so clever, right? Do you get my reference? I don't get it. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Barbie. Greece is sometimes seen as like the cradle and birthplace of European civilization and thought. So much of everything you see today has some kind of correlation to Greece. Sure. Pretty heavy for a relatively small country in the Balkans, eh? Now let's find out how it all went down. So let's just jump into it. Greece is located in the southernmost part of the Balkan Peninsula that stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital autonomous Athens. State. One of the oldest capitals in the world where nearly 40% of the entire population lives. Now despite the administrative makeup, Greece is generally divided into nine geographic regions. Thrace, okay. Macedonia, not to be confused with this place that we already talked about, Thessaly, Epirus, Central Greece, the Ionian Islands, the Aegean Islands, and Crete. As you can probably tell from its makeup, Greece is one of, if not probably the most, seafaring marine emphasized countries in the world. I mean, they do have the world's largest merchant marine fleet after Japan. And at any Whoa. given point in Greece, you are no more than 85 miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. Greece has over 2,000 islands, only about 220 of which are inhabited, and about 4,000 extra islets, keys, and sea rocks. Even the ones that are like right off the coast of Turkey. In fact, the only two significant islands belonging to Turkey in the Aegean are Imbros, or Kanachale, and Tenedos, or Botsjada. Now, keep in mind, the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island. It's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian <laughs> Isthmus in the city of Corinth, which has a huge canal going through it. After independence from the Ottoman times, Greece was very intent on making sure they kept everything in the Aegean. This has historically led to some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delimitation of territorial waters, airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out, kind of, but some things are still left in a gray zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imia or Kardak Island. Is there even something on those islands or is it like just some random islands that are floating around? Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous state. See this little guy right here, the third finger on the weird monster oh, claw yeah. looking peninsula? Well, okay. that peninsula is called Halkidiki and the third finger is Mount Athos. With a population of only about 2,000, Mount Athos or Holy Mountain is interesting because it's an isolated monastic state completely run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. Oh. The number of daily visitors is restricted. You have to have a special permit and you have to be a dude no women allowed although his <laughs> god damn it grace ah, what kind of secret brotherhood kind of shit is this what, what do the what do the monks do there huh? 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 are we making a pedo joke no okay let's not make a pedo joke historically some women have either accidentally or Too intentionally easy. got in including this to easy to get in <laughs> Former Greek beauty pageant winner, she dressed up as a man and snuck in. Oh, the what the fuck? Got, and you have to bring this former Greek beauty pageant winner. Wait, she was a beauty pageant winner? Is it weird for me to say she's not that cute? The fuck? Hey, they were built different back in the day. <laughs> she dressed up as a man and. Why does that dude look like he's on heroin? And snuck in. The three largest cities are, of course, Athens, the capital, Thessaloniki, and Patras. However, the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things okay. like Corfu being the most family-friendly island. Delos is known for being the legendary birthplace of Apollo. Skyros and oh. Hydra are kind of like the quiet islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes once held the Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Cardi once tried to become its own Rip. country at one point in time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculously picturesque. Yo, I, I'm a fan of the building styles. 
like the fucking uh the ancient world Caria once tried to become its own country at one point in time Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands great for sailing and yeah. water sports Santorini with its Apartment ridiculously buildings. picturesque cliffside white marble villas and Patmos the incredibly significant religious site in which Jesus's disciple John was exiled and wrote the book of Revelation speaking of which Greece has more archaeological sites per capita than any other country in the world only ranks behind a few other countries like Turkey and Mexico in terms of overall sites now we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot like France more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year Oof. now we all know about the Acropolis and the Parthenon but other cool sites that stick out include the Meteora Pillar Cliff Monasteries the Necromantion of Ephyra the Oracle of Delphi St. Theodora's Chapel with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence of roots the sculpted whoa, face whoa, on the whoa. shore Theodora's the Chapel fuck? with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence Evidence of roots, the sculpted face on the shore of Nisi, the Chios former leper colony buildings, the palace of the Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes, and of course hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many to list, and if you know of any, please write them down in the comments below and share. In the meantime, we gotta get down to the foundations of the country, the land. <laughs> Now, there's an old Greek saying, when God made the world, he took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. I, I kind of paraphrase that a little bit, don't quote me on it. Too late. I'm pretty sure every country has a saying like that, I gotta be honest, because I heard the same about Gary. It's a quote now. Now, Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't exactly score high on the soil performance index, and overland soil transportation has always been an issue. But when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector, you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub. And wait till we get to the Israel episode. They've done quite an interesting I can't job. believe there's so much money lovers in his people. On the West, on the West Bank. Bank. I don't care about the West, West Bank. Talk about me. Talk about the rock. Yeah, people wanted me to check out the Israel episode, uh, but they, I was also uh, told not to speak too much. On that episode which is kind of like what um so we might do that next time because i'm kind of intrigued about what the fuck is going on over there i don't know anything oh i like the things i know about israel i don't know them okay First of all, the country is about 80% mountainous on both the mainland Balkan region and the islands. Two main mountain chains form along the Balkan mainland, the Pindus in the west and the Rhodopes in the northeast, Macedonia and Thrace regions. Right around the area where Thessaly meets Macedonia, you find Mount Olympus, the tallest mountain in Greece, notable for being the legendary home of the ancient Greek gods. Now, with the exception of small boats and canoes, almost all the rivers in Greece are non-navigable as they are too shallow. Nonetheless, the largest river, Aliakmonos, flows through the Pindus range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the monster. Claw. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake, can be found in the south-central Greek region. Beautiful, right? Well, it comes at a cost. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world as it lies Wait, on two seriously? major tectonic plate zones, the North Anatolian Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that although frequent, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea. Or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets Oof. about 250 days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the world's marble mines are found in Greece. And they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which, if you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. <laughs> Popular dishes like moussaka, spanakopita, the classic Greek salad not allowed to die moussaka. until you do. That Popular dishes like good. moussaka, spanakopita. That's why uh, my dad's one of his favorite foods. Moussaka. If you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. Popular dishes like moussaka, spanakopita, the classic Greek salad, pita with gyros, the real kind, not that cheap sleazy stuff down on 14th Street in which... Whoa, why are you talking shit about the juniors, buddy? Greek Come salad, on, pita with gyros, the real kind, not that cheap sleazy stuff down on 14th Street in which half of the meat is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes up about 4% of their economic output. Most of the revenue at over 80% comes from tourism and service jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in nature would be places like the Vikos Gorge, the Sami Cave in Cephalonia, the Siri E. Kalter Blue Eyed Spring, Volcanic Rocks of Lemnos, Neda Waterfalls, Tozar Hot Springs, and so much more. In a nutshell, Greece is like a rocky, rugged, seafaring realm of merchant ships and olives. Could have said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. Well, Probably. on to the next. Damn Winston cool, Churchill right? once said, Greeks don't fight like heroes. Heroes fight like Greeks. Okay. First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest <laughs> aging populations in Europe. The vast majority Fuck. of the country at about 93% are made up of ethnic... Fuck. Wait, wait. Greeks and their... Oh, kill me with that shit. Come on, bro. Oh. Greeks. Okay. 
First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest aging populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country wow. at about 93% are made up of ethnic Greeks and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. They use the Type-C and F plug outlets. They use the Euro as their currency, although prior to the Euro, they used the Drachma, which was the oldest Drachma. consistently used currency in the world. And they drive on the right side of the road. Now, pretty much Drachma anyone people. that has ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western world. The history is too long to explain in detail, but in the quickest way I can put this, Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city-states fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this. Alexander the Great ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? Then there was classical Greece, Roman Greece, Byzantine Greece, no Ottoman comment. Greece, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern Jonas version of Greece Kapolis. that we have today. Yes. Thanks to Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form of Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language, and it went all the way down into the Byzantine era. This means at one point in time, even black Africans were speaking Greek, or at least the ancient Koine Greek language. It became so widespread that today almost every language in Europe invokes some kind of Greek origin in certain vocabulary. For example, in English, we have academy, telephone, grammar, and even geography. Not only that, but Greek has in one way or another been spoken for over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently spoken and written language wow. in the world. And eh, the Shang Dynasty. And eh, moving on. We could go on and on talking about Greece's explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, myth, wars, warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, sculpture, arts, leaders, philosophers, games, and interesting clothing options. Well, that'll take too long, and we gotta get through this episode. About nine philosophers, games, and interesting clothing. My boy feels zero shame. He's like, look upon this greatness that God has sculptured. This holy dick. Look at Holding it. Options. Well, that'll take too long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, mostly in the Eastern Orthodox branch, just like many other countries in the Slavic world. If you've ever met a Greek person, you'll know that most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves. Many of you Greek geographies, or as I like to call you, geogra Greeks, have told me that the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical <laughs> Greek family upbringing. A little exaggerated, but nonetheless not far off. Big families with strong opinionated parents that you do not talk back to. There's always like a weird grandma mumbling something about the Turks and one of the cousins is probably lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight but when grandma brings in the souvlaki and moussaka everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful warm Norman Rockwell painting at least that's the picture you geogra Greeks have painted for me I don't know how was that was that in the ballpark so anyway in Greece voting is required by law as is conscription for men ages 16 oh. yeah that's right 16 they get them while they're young up to 45 for a minimum of nine months in service many people celebrate name day instead Didn't of their birthdays in which they have a party on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from it used to be like that back in Bulgaria but it's no longer mandatory name day instead of their birthdays in which Thank they have a party God. on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from land is kind of limited so to save space many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary retirement homes are incredibly rare as most Greek grandparents typically end up living in their children's homes traditional music can be found everywhere you'll probably hear a lot of lutes mandolins and tambourines traditional dances are alive and well they all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast tambourines. Traditional dances are alive and well. They all use. What is happening in this picture? Usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast paced movements and jumpy actions. Oh, and old guys smoking while playing backgammon. There's always old guys smoking and playing backgammon. Avoid the offensive Mutsa hands. And just like we studied in the Estonia Mutsa episode, hands? Greece has an influx of women, like a lot. Somewhere around 60 65% of the population is female. This may or may not be the reason why Greece is also the world's most. How can I put this in a non crude and vulgar phrasing Maybe for our children? Maybe move into uh, Greece. Greece is the most hey hey active country in the world. They even beat Brazil. Brazil. Interestingly Jeez. enough, Greece also has the lowest divorce. Um, I need I might need to start going to vacations to Greece to Greece a lot. You know? I mean it's right over there. Pretty easy to get to. Corona, can you fuck off so I can go? You know rate in the EU Come as well. Corona. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Oh, let's just shit. address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Uh, Basically, dude. in a nutshell, back in 2001, Greece joined the EU. Long story short, they misrepresented their financial statements. They entered an IMF and ECB memorandum. And now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts. You know, son, back taxes. in my day. Yeah, back in your day, 
day, you ruined my day. Greece also has the highest unemployment rate in the EU as Thanks. well, with nearly a quarter of the population seeking jobs. Nonetheless, as depressing as that Ooh. sounds, Greece actually, interestingly enough, has the lowest suicide rate in the EU. Now, before we move on, here are some rapid fire notable contributions Greece has made to the world. Okay. Inventions like the water mill, alarm clocks, lighthouses, the crane, construction Wait, levers just made clocks? to the world. Inventions thing? like the water mill, alarm So the water goes down. Wait, what the? Oh, okay, okay. Clocks, lighthouses, the crane, construction like levers, okay, catapults, okay, okay. a crude steam engine, central heating, and technically the first robot concepts like citizenship, early democracy, atom theory, various fields of mathematics like geometry, advancements in disease study and medicine, philosophy, theater, dynamic sculpture and art, written history, trial by jury, and of course, the Olympics. Notable Greeks would probably include Eratosthenes, Leonidas, Pericles, Homer, Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also... Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Alexander no. the Great. No. No. Yes. Yes. No. I'm gonna he say is he not is. Great. Don't say it. Alexander no. the Great. And also. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Oh. No. Of course he is Greek. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna say he is not Greek. Yes, he is. Modern contemporaries like Konstantinos Karathiadori, who taught yes, Einstein, yes. singer Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yep, he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, Yanni, soccer players, Georgios Samaras, Georgios Karayunis, Konstantinos Mitroglu, this crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days, Queen Sophia of Spain, and of course, Mitroglu, this crazy guy who ran. I mean, I can't believe it. Look at this dude. He's fucking shredded. There's not a fat cell in his body. Like a thousand miles in 11 days, Queen Sophia of Spain, and of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. Don't even and try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. Okay. Greece is really old. Like, whoa, really old. They've planted oh. so many shifting diplomatic talk, ties throughout the millennia that it's like ridiculous. That, okay. In a nutshell, though, they generally get along pretty well with other Orthodox countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Of those Orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they grew up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to be Orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean seafaring culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted certain Italian words in their vernacular, like una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the third century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan, South Korea thing in which historically they've had a lot of drama because, you know, Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today, there is virtually no tension between everyday citizens. They've moved on mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a huge no-no. When it comes to their best friend, though, almost every Geogra Greek told me Cyprus. Many Greeks don't even really see Cyprus as a separate country, but rather just an extension of Greece. They love their little brothers with funny accents and would do anything for them. In conclusion, modern-day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is, today, you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape, or form molded by something Greek. Kudos to you, Greece. And by the way, kudos is a Greek word. Stay tuned. Ah. Grenada is coming up next. What? Grenada? We found out a lot, a lot more about Greece then, I guess. Interesting. Islands and shit. <laughs> and a quick thank you to the patrons. Pedro, Matins, Kamasko, you and Rob, Air Princess, Wasterik, Fuse, Chicken Face, Tree, Senior Hilter. Lemon and Moon, Eichmar, and Dasha. Thank you for the support, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you missed anything about Greece, let me know, Greek people. Yeah, I'll catch you next time. Have a nice walking day.